Okay, so you've got a block on the incline plane. The question is, what's the minimum force required to hold the block in place? Now notice what makes this different than what you did in lab, slightly more challenging, not too much though, is the direction of the force. In lab, we pulled along the incline. This one's a little bit, well, it's, it's along the ground, not along the incline. <coughs> So how's this going to change what you did in, in lab? You'll just put the force into yeah. those components. Yeah, we'll have to break that force down into the X and Y components. So we've got an inclined plane. We've got a block. And I'll put the forces on it in red. We've got gravity, normal force, the force that you're pushing it with, and one more. What's the last force? And which way is it going to go? Read the question. What is the minimum force required to hold the block in place? So that means if you push with any less force, what's it going to do? It's going to go down. Does that make sense to everybody? And if it slides down, which way is friction going to go? Up. Does that make sense to everybody? That's the trickiest part about all these questions is figuring out which way does friction go? Now, friction's always, always, every single time, parallel to the surface. It can only be parallel to the surface. So friction's going to go this way, parallel to the surface. So with that said, we've got two crooked vectors here. Where, where's our coordinate system? This way. Okay, so uh, I'll, y is perpendicular, x is parallel. Why are we doing it that way? Because it makes your life easier. Do we have to do it that way? No, but it's far more complex if you don't. So just, I'm just telling you, <laughs> it's, it's better if you do. <clears throat> now with that said, what are our two crooked vectors? Force applied and gravity. Let's do gravity first. The hypotenuse, mg. We have to break it down. This one's perpendicular. This one's parallel. Notice which direction those two arrows go. See that? mg goes this way, so these two have to point in that same direction. And the mg has to be the hypotenuse. It's the longest side. So this angle up here and this angle down here, they're the same thing. What's the equation for this side of the triangle? Y'all done it enough to have it memorized yet? Y'all see that? It's mg, because that's the hypotenuse. Opposite, so that makes it sine theta. So it's mg sine theta. And you can prove that to yourself. You write out sine theta equals opposite over adjacent. I'm sorry, that's wrong opposite over hypotenuse and then work it all out okay so this is going to be m g sine theta and i can just write that like that because i've done this about 15 million times and i have it memorized y'all have only done it you know 1500 times <laughs> but at the same point you should be getting it close to being memorized now okay y'all starting to is it starting to get there okay uh how about this side? There you go. Mg cos theta. Well, now comes the tricky one. We gotta break this one down. And the key is, <clears throat> one piece has to be parallel to the surface, and one piece has to be perpendicular to the surface. That's, that's the key. So, 
Well, it's going to match up with this thing right here. You see that? Okay, so let's just kind of slide that up there. See how I made it so that you, this piece is perpendicular and this piece is parallel. Now the, the red arrow, the hypotenuse, is pointing this way. So these have to point this way. How y'all doing? Does that make sense to everybody? It's kind of tricky. So this would be the force in the y direction and this would be the force in the x direction. <clears throat> Where's the angle? Right angle, left angle, which one is it? How do you know that? <clears throat> yeah, okay. So here's the way to the right way to do this. The right way to do this is you've got your your red arrow here. See that one? Then you've got the ground. I drew that in black, so I'll draw it in black over here. <clears throat> and then that black line is parallel to that purple line. So it's like we went like this. And so then we just fall back on alternate interior angles. Do y'all see that? So this angle up here matches this angle down here. <clears throat> okay, well, now what? We knew right from the get-go, oh, incline plane. I'm gonna have vectors everywhere. Started drawing, we got it all drawn now. Now what? Yeah, as usual, throw Newton's second law at it. X, Y, split it up. Why do we have to do X and Y? Because we have forces in the X and the Y direction. So, <coughs> some of the forces in the X direction equal mass times acceleration in the X direction. What are we gonna add in the X direction? What forces do we have? Yes, positive or negative? Positive. positive, how do you know that? Going to the right, so the force of friction, positive. Now what? This piece right here, right? Positive or negative? Positive. How do you know that? Because it's pointing that way, right? Okay, so we're gonna have plus the force that you applied in the x direction. <coughs> One more. Gravity in the x direction, positive or negative? Negative, because it's going down the incline. Okay, so we're gonna minus mg sine theta equals mass times acceleration in the x direction. Now, let me read the question to you again. <coughs> what is the minimum force required to hold the block in place? With that question in mind, What's A? Zero. How do you know that? Zero. We're holding it in place, right? So A is zero, okay? So this piece here goes away. <coughs> okay, well, uh, how about I add this one over there, just so that everything's positive. I don't know why, it just makes me feel happy. So I'm gonna put this over there to keep everything positive, and I'm gonna write these equations out. What's the equation for the force of friction? Normal force times mu. That, do we have an equation for the force in the x direction? We do. We haven't written it up on the board yet though. Can we get it? This, this side of the triangle? Can we get a... What side of the triangle is that? See how it's touching the angle? That makes it adjacent, right? That's the adjacent side. The red side, that's the thing that the question is asking for. 
That red number, that's, what, that's the answer. That's what we want. That's the hypotenuse. Adjacent hypotenuse, how are they related? Cosine. So we say cosine theta equals adjacent fx divided by the hypotenuse, which is f, multiply f up here. Now we have fx. Does that make sense to everybody? So I'm going to do plus force times cos theta equals mg sine theta. How y'all doing? Any questions? Y'all doing all right? <clears throat> How many unknowns do we have here? Can we just plug in, plug in the answer, plug in the numbers and get the answer? What are we looking for? We want F. What's the minimum force required? Let me ask you this. I thought force of friction static was less than or equal to normal force times mu s. It's the equation on the equation sheet. How can we just say this equals that? Yeah, we're, we're bringing, I'm pushing, you're, you're pushing on that thing, that, that mass, you're pushing on it, and you're, you're going to let it go, let it go, let it go, until it just breaks. So you're at the breaking point. Does that make sense to everybody? If you pull with any less force, it's going to be, the, the friction, will, the static friction will be broken, so we are at the equal point. So, yes, this is legal. Does that make sense to everybody? <clears throat> okay, well, we're looking for this. Do we know N? Oh, how are we going to get N? Some of the forces in the Y direction. Okay, so let's go there. Some of the forces, Y direction equals mass times acceleration in the Y direction. What forces do we have in the Y direction? Let's add them all up. Normal force, positive or negative? Positive. What else? Oh, see that little one right there? We've got to deal with that one. Positive or negative? Negative. Sine or cosine? Okay, so this is going to be minus force applied times the sine of theta. more. How'd you know minus? There we go. Minus mg cos theta equals ma. Is this, is this acceleration positive or negative? Oh, how'd you know zero? It's, it, it's not moving at all, let alone going rocketing off the surface of the inclined plane. So this side is zero. Now, what are we trying to get over here? Well, yeah, notice the y direction always does that for you. It always gives you the normal force. So uh, I'm just going to take both these pieces, add them to the other side. So the normal force is equal to F sine theta uh, plus mg cos theta. And now I'm going to take all that and plug it in right there. So that now we've got F sine theta plus mg cos theta, the whole thing times mu. plus F cos theta equals mg sine theta. What's our goal? We want the force, the minimum force applied. Now how do we, how do we set this to minimum? 
We did. We've already done that. How do we do that? By making right there. You see that? It was actually two pieces. When we said this is positive and that's equal. When we set those two things, we said we're solving the minimum problem. Do you all understand what I'm saying? Okay. So, when we solve for f, it will be f min. Now, how are we going to get it? Three steps left. Step one, distribute mu. Step two, combine like terms and factor the f out. Yep. Step three, get it by itself. Okay. So, let's do the distribution first. So, we've got <coughs> f times mu times sine theta plus m times g times mu times cos theta. And we still have this plus f cos theta here and this mg sine theta there. Now, I'm going to do two steps at once here. See this thing here? No f. Force is not in that one. I'm just going to move it to the other side. How do I get it over there? Subtract. How do you know subtract? Because you're adding it on this side. This says add, so you do the opposite, right? So we're going to subtract it over to the other side. Now, the, I'm going to do two things at once. The other thing I'm going to do at the same time is both these pieces do have an F in it. So I'm going to factor that F out of those two. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so on the left side, I'm going to have F times mu sine theta plus cos theta. And on that side, I'm going to have mg sine theta minus mg mu cos theta. Does that make sense to everybody? Now what? Yeah. How do we get it by itself? Just send that parenthetical statement there downstairs. So our final answer is <coughs> F is equal to, uh, I'm going to pull the MG out of this, MG sine theta minus mu cos theta divided by mu sine theta plus cos theta. Can we cancel this out? Oh, they look so close, but no. We're stuck with it. Got to write it all out. Be nice if we could. Okay, what's next? Oh, we're done with this problem. Any questions? Oh wait, I mean, I guess we gotta plug in numbers, but. Okay, let's plug in numbers. I'll put this down up here so you can see the. <coughs> Theta is 50, mass is two, mu is 0.23. What's the minimum force?
you get, Nico? No. Do you have it? I got a 14 point. Uh oh. I've got two answers so far. I've asked two people. <laughs> okay. Is that what you, that's what you had, right? 14? Is that what the number I'm hearing? Got three votes for 14. I'm not sure what. <laughs> Fourteen point eight newtons. Can you explain where you set the minimum again? Yes. Okay. So it was in two pieces. The first thing we did, we said, is if you push on that with minimum force, mm -hmm. then any less force and the whole block's gonna slide down. If the block slides down, friction opposes that, so friction's going up. So that's the first piece, okay? So the first piece is friction goes up. Okay, so that's the first piece to define minimum. The second piece was right here. Given that equation, force of friction static is equal to mu n, I'm sorry, less than or equal to we said it's equal to because we're right at that breaking point. We're at the minimum possible level. Any less, and it's going to break loose. So these two pieces are what set it at minimum. Does that make sense? What if we had asked for, well, actually, let me, <laughs> the next question. <laughs> what if, oh, what is the normal force? Hey, we did that. How would the problem change if we asked for the maximum force? Okay, so now with that in mind, I'm glad you asked that question because that leads nicely into this. How would the problem change if we were asked for maximum force? Yeah, think about it. If I push as hard as I can, what's the block gonna do? It's gonna move up any harder and it'll break free and go up. So if it goes up, which way does friction go? down. So the thing that would change is right here, I'd make this piece negative. I'd le and this would still be equals because we're at that equal point. Any, any harder and it breaks free. Okay? So I'd set those two to minus and equals and that would be the maximum force. <coughs> How y'all doing? That was a good question, Megan. Any other questions? I don't know why when I ask a question, this is a, it's a habit that I've acquired. It's not good that, you know, you, people do this. I just have this habit of rubbing my hands after I ask a question. It's annoying me. If it's annoying me, it's probably annoying somebody else too, so. <clears throat> okay, any other questions? You all right? I'm trying really hard not to rub my hands together and hold them out here. Okay. Let's move to circular acceleration now. We've already talked about it. We've already talked about all this. In fact, we've already talked about circular acceleration. Um, but now, we're gonna put one little piece in it. M. You put an M in front of A, and it becomes force. So last chapter we talked about circular acceleration. Now we're talking about circular force. They go hand in hand. It's the same stuff. <clears throat> is, that a, is that a hand of stretch or a hand uh, of question? You know, I was just stretching. Fair but, enough. Uh, I was getting the wrong answer because my calculator was in the way. <sighs> yeah, that'll get you. Did you fix it now? Good. Okay, uh, just as a reminder, what's centrifugal or centrifugal force? An imaginary force. It's imaginary, yes. What else, do, what else do you know about it? And sorry, I, poor Megan, I've always got the post right in her face. It's, it's imaginary, true. What else do you know about it? Yeah, it's, it's what pulls the object out. When, when an object's going in a circle, it pulls it out. But James says, it's imaginary. And you say, I've been in the car going in the circle, and I felt it pulling me out. 
how can James say it's imaginary? I experienced it firsthand. Yeah, it's not actually anything pulling you. It's just, it's just you wanting to go in a straight line. The car is moving in a circle, and you just want to go in a straight line. That's all. You, that's not force. That's just inertia. The reason you don't go in a straight line is because the car, seat belt, friction on the seat, maybe the door, is pulling you to the inside of the circle. And that force is real. It's really pushing you to the inside of the circle. How do I know? Because if it didn't push you to the inside of the circle, you'd go in a straight line. The car would go left and you'd just keep going. It wouldn't be good. <clears throat> Anybody slid on the ground at 40 miles an hour before? I've, I've done it multiple times. I used to race bicycles. And when you lose large chunks of skin, it's like a cheese grate. Don't try it, okay? It's just not fun. Uh, anyway, I don't know why I told you that. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, yeah, car goes left. You will go in a circle. Keep the door closed. Useful. I had a friend. He was just getting out of bike racing. He was, and he said, I'm wishing I was still racing. He said, if I say I'm going to go do a race, here's what you need to do. Put me in a car. Get me going 40. Open the door and push me out. Just to remind me I'm not going to race anymore. I didn't ever do that to him. <clears throat> Speaking of bike racing... Let's talk about it. Okay, anybody ever seen track cycling? They usually show it in the Olympics, okay? Whether you've seen it in person or not, it's, they show it every four years with the Summer Olympics. This was the velodrome that they built in Atlanta uh, for the 96 Olympics. Uh, it's not there anymore. They tore it out after the Olympics. But uh, it had a steep track, it was 48 degrees. This is the one in, in Minneapolis. It's 52. Two. No, it's, that one's 48 also. Uh, there's a track. The newest track in the country is in Rock Hill, just up the road. It's, it's just up, up the road in Rock Hill. It's a nice concrete track. Uh, real pretty track. Say it again. That's where I live. You live in Rock Hill? Have you seen it? Oh, okay. You haven't seen it? Maybe I just don't know about it. Yeah, I don't know. It's there. They just made it. I mean, I say new. It's probably four or five years old. Yeah, but the newest one in the country. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, so here's... I'm going to... I don't know if sound works in here. I think, I, I think with HDMI, sound will just work with this. Let me see. Um... <coughs> I think this one's a good one. Jason Kenny, of Prince of the New World Sprint Champion, Wacky Milers, the Okay, oh, this is good. Okay, this is. Silver medalist in this event before. Okay, so uh, let me give you some background. This is World World Championships 2016. Uh, there's no Americans in this. Uh, Jason Kenny, British guy. I'll move this down so you can see it. New Zealand, Japan, Germany, two German guys. What, what country is that one? Is that Malaysia? I think that's Malaysia. Is that right? I don't know. I think that's Malaysia. Anyway, this is World Championships, and I'm going to have to crank the volume up on my computer because it's not piping over there like I thought it would. Okay. And we won't, this is eight minutes long. We're not going to watch the whole thing. This event is called the Karen. Okay, so most people don't know about track cycling, so I've got to show you. Okay. So track cycling, the whole idea that you're on a track, so what I mean is banked corners. Why would you bank the corners? Let me ask you this. How do you turn a bike? Wrong. <laughs> People think that, and you're, you're almost right. But here's what, let me, let me say, if you only did what you just said, you're riding long and you turn the wheel and do nothing else. Here's what's going to happen. Bike goes left, your belly button, your center of mass, continue to go straight. What's going to happen? 
right shoulder hits pavement, road rash, allergic reaction to sliding on pavement. It's not actually allergic, it's just we like to say it that way, okay? So step one, what is it? Lean into the turn, then turn. Okay, does that make sense? That's how you turn a bike. Now, if you want to continue to accelerate while you're turning, you have to continue to pedal. Does this make sense? So if you continue to pedal while you're turning and leaning, what's going to happen? Pedal hits ground. When pedal hits ground, it usually it doesn't result well. It usually throws you over the other side and then you get road rash again, okay? Now, track bikes, bicycles for the velodrome, track bikes, don't have gears. No coasting, it's just not an option, it's a direct drive. So it's not even like there's a coaster brake, like old-fashioned BMX bikes, you know, or uh, you know, like your kid bike, you know. There's no coaster brakes. You, coasting is, if the wheel's turning, pedals are turning. It's the way it is. Choose your gear before the race starts. Okay, and <clears throat> so how do, you not pet, how do you not clip your pedal in the corner? Ah, solution, bank the track. Okay, so if the track is banked, you never have to worry about clipping your pedal. Does that make sense? With that said, you're trying to, trying to win the race. The track is a circle. There's never going to be any traffic on the course. You don't need brakes. Get rid of those things. They're just going to slow you down. You're trying to win. Go faster. Why do you want to slow down? So track bikes have no gears, no brakes, okay? And this particular, okay, any questions so far? Just a quick introduction to track racing, okay? This particular event is called the Kirin. It's a very fun event. Here's how it goes. Starts with motorcycle. And you're thinking, what, I thought it was a bicycle race. Yeah, okay, motorcycle comes on the track, and the motorcycle, uh, gets in front and the rule is you can't pass the motorcycle for the first three laps. You gotta stay behind the motorcycle. At this point people start a uh, chess game and depending on where you're racing and who the officials are that chess game can get kind of messy. But anyway, chess game happens behind the motorcycle trying to be in the right spot. And then after three, and then the motorcycle gets faster and faster and faster each lap and then the motorcycle gets out of the way and then that's when the race starts. Does that make sense to everybody? So the race starts, you're already going full speed and then you sprint on top of that, okay? And so this is a Kieran, this is World Championships and uh, yeah, here we go. And I'm just gonna show you a couple pieces here. I'm not gonna show you all eight minutes. So Japan won the bronze medalist last year and end up to the silver medalist of last year. Start line. Can't leave win this one. They've got their, uh, this is a sprint event, so these are big guys. Jason Kenny. Some bumping and barging in the heat. Dawkins alongside Wang getting ready. Malaysia, yeah. Concentration on his face. Could he win the world title? He's been trying for many years. He's now in this final. Six riders lined up. This is in London, so Jason Kenny has the crowd. This is a gladiatorial battle between Wimpy Motorcycle. There's the motorcycle. Race starts. The Derny bike with uh, Peter the Derny driver on the front. A Wang in yellow. Dawkins in the black there. The silver medalist previously. Sitting on the wheel of a Wang there in the yellow and black. A little bit like a wasp on the front. Waiting to sting the rest of the riders. Dawkins on the wheel. Kenny tucked in on the wheel of Dawkins. Oh, oh. Okay, oh, I wanted to catch it a little bit before that. They're just entering the corner here. Let me see if I can catch it coming into the corner. That's all right. Sting the rest. See how he's just starting to bank over? He's entering the turn. The track forces the turn for you. So you never have to worry about clipping your pedals. 
<clears throat> okay, I'm going to jump ahead to where the, the motorcycle pulls off at three minutes here. Right to the back, Islas will try and go for a long sprint here uh, this afternoon for this world. See how much they're yeah. banked now? Two laps to go. Bell means one lap to go. It was hard to tell whether the German guy or the New Zealand guy got it. I think they'll show it. What a sprint, but did Dawkins get there? It might be Dawkins. Whoa. Wow. Who got that? Wow. <laughs> and the Malaysia guy, he, he, he didn't have anywhere to go. Do you see that? He, he, he didn't have the juice to go around the top. He was hoping to, but then the, Ger the uh, guy from New Zealand boxed him in. So he didn't even have it ended up, whether he had the juice or not, we'll never know, because the New Zealand guy boxed him in. And uh, I don't know. Who, who votes New Zealand in black? Whoever's on the inside. Inside, that's the German guy on the inside. Think you think the German guy got it? A higher yeah, width. I can just yeah, barely see the front of his I, I think you're right. I think, I think the German guy had it on the inside. Uh, by the way, as they are crossing that line there, they were probably going 55 miles an hour. Did, did y'all see how, as the race was starting, they're all like jumping all over the place? They're going about 40 at that point, and they're trying to decide who's, who's gonna lead it out. Anyway. <clears throat> yeah, so, yeah, so I didn't use that word, but you're right. So they're, they're drafting behind that motorcycle. So the whole point of the motorcycle getting out there is motorcycle, they're using the motorcycle to break the wind, so they're drafting behind it, and they're conserving their energy waiting for the, when the race starts and the motorcycle pulls off. What was your question? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the person... Whoever's second is using about 33% less energy than the person in front. So it's advantageous to be behind, except at the finish line. Then it's not advantageous. <coughs> okay, so back to this. How steeply? Should a velodrome be banked if the tires exert no friction at 36? The radius of curvature is 20 meters. Okay, why do you need friction? If you're turning, what pulls you to the center of the circle normally? You're on a bike, you want to go left, you lean into it, turn the wheel, Simultaneously, what's pulling you in? Yeah, but this, what's causing the centripetal force? You're right, it is the centripetal force. It's friction. Friction pulls you in. How can you be going through a corner with no friction? That's what the question's asking. How can you be going through the corner? You don't need... Uh, <clears throat> how steeply should it be banked if the tires exert no friction at 36? Now, if you go faster or slower, there will be friction. But at 36, no friction necessary. How does that work? Yeah, it's the normal force. Because the track is banked, part of that normal force is pointing to the center of the circle. 
And that normal force now provides a centripetal force rather than the friction. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. By the way, they do the same thing with highways. You know, the, on the highways when the, the curve is banked, it's that way on purpose. That way you can take the corner even if it's wet. You don't need as much, or icy. <coughs> Okay, so let's solve this problem. How steep do you have to have it banked? Now, the hardest part about these sort of problems, by the way, you're gonna apply this, these concepts that I'm showing you now, apply to bikes on velodromes, cars on NASCAR tracks, cars on the federal highways, uh, airplanes making a turn, birds making a turn, <laughs> uh, lots of things, okay, anything that has a banked it has to bank to turn, this, these concepts are going to apply here, okay? <clears throat> Say it again? This would have been nice on the first test. Why is that? Because the first question was about a plane turning. Oh, yeah, well, actually, yeah, you didn't need this concept for that question, but it helps understand the big picture of what's going on. Okay, so uh, let's see. I'm going to draw the track. I'll draw it on this side because I always start on that side. Um, here's the track. Here's the cyclist, and we're looking head on. Okay, so the, the, the cyclist is coming out of the track. So there's the wheels. Here's the handlebars. Uh, here's the head of the cyclist. I don't know. I, can, I don't think I can draw the rest. Legs. Pedals, okay, use your imagination. A bicycle coming out of the board, okay? The question is, what's theta? Okay, bike is coming out of the board. Now, let me clarify. I'm gonna do this differently than we've done before. The difference between what we've done before and what we're doing now, before we had objects sliding on an inclined plane. This is not sliding. Do you see the difference? This one's, this is a three-dimensional problem. This thing's coming out of the board. It's in the process of turning. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so this is in the process of turning. And what are the forces on this bike? Normal force. Normal force pushing up. Gravity pulling down. That's, here, here's the catch, and this is the other trick, okay? So I'm glad you said that. Oh, okay, yeah, if there were friction, we'd have to include that, but the problem specifically said there's no friction because he's at the magic speed, okay? If he was any slower, there'd be friction. So if he was going slower than this, he'd be up a little bit and friction would be keeping him from sliding down. If he was going faster, he'd be banked more and friction would be keeping him from sliding out. Just as a side note, you can go around these tracks so fast because that's, that's about right. They're banked, they're designed to be perpendicular at 36 degrees, 36 miles an hour. So if you go faster than 36 miles an hour, you're more than perpendicular. It's possible to get your body horizontal going around the track. It's loads of fun. And anyway, <clears throat> when you start playing with three dimensions, it just, it just becomes more fun. Oh yeah, so there's no friction. This is it. And why don't we include, so let me write this out, sum of the forces equals ma. We're not going to include centripetal force over here, okay? Let me say this again. The centripetal force is not a force in and of itself. Okay? I, I, it's, I know I said it, and I'm, let me just say it again. Because centripetal force is not a force in and of itself. You never put it here. Okay? Something else always causes it. Does that make sense? Something else always causes centripetal force. It doesn't exist in and of itself. <coughs> so, <clears throat> here's what we're going to do. I told you this one's different. With an inclined plane and an object sliding, you put your 
coordinate system to match the inclined plane. Not so with this one. Okay, we're going to use good old fashioned regular coordinate system. We'll say x, y. I guess it's not quite normal, just x going towards the inside. And if that's the case, which of one of these is crooked? Normal. normal force. So we're going to break that one down. So this would be normal force x, normal force y. Now, let's write this out. Some of the forces in the x direction equal mass times acceleration in the x direction. What are the forces in the x direction? Just the x component of the normal force. Do you see that? Just normal force x equals, is this thing accelerating? It's moving at a constant speed, 36 miles an hour. But it's a trick, isn't it? It is moving, he is moving at a constant speed. However, the fact that he's going in a circle means that he is accelerating. If he wasn't accelerating, he'd go in a straight line. But he's not going in a straight line, he's going in a circle. So there is acceleration. Does that make sense to everybody? So that's what goes here. So this is m v squared over r. And, and as a side note, in this equation, you see this, you put all your real forces over here, and the result is centripetal force. That's not one of the ones that you add over here. It's the result. Does that make sense to everybody? I'm out of time. So we'll have to finish this next time.